They keep us focused on decoy dichotomies. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Westerners are taught that evil foreign regimes don't let their people criticize their government. Meanwhile, Westerners themselves are trained to never criticize their government. They're trained instead to criticize decoy dichotomies, false partisan nonsense, not the real power. Westerners are trained to criticize the actions of the other party or the beliefs of the other ideological faction, but never the foreign or domestic policies which are supported by both parties. The power structure which maintains 99.9% of the same policies regardless of which party is officially in charge is the real government. But Westerners are trained never to look there. Instead, they're trained to fixate on a false two-handed puppet show diversion. Westerners say, Well, I'd rather live here than China or Russia, because here I can criticize my government whenever I want. Okay, but you don't. You don't criticize your government. You just criticize the puppets, and usually only the puppets of the party you don't like. You never criticize your actual government. Criticizing your actual government looks like attacking the murderous foreign policy that's supported by both parties, attacking the authoritarian domestic policies supported by both parties, attacking the exploitative capitalist systems supported by both parties. Westerners are trained not to do that. They're trained to believe that criticizing your government looks like saying Drumpf or Let's Go Brandon, while the same tyrannical agendas march forward regardless of who sits in the White House. Westerners are free in the same way free-range chickens are free. Sure, the door is technically open and they can technically go outside, but they're conditioned never to do so. Western so-called liberal democracy purports to offer freedom while in practice only offering the illusion of freedom. It uses the most sophisticated propaganda machine ever devised to keep people trapped in an existence as blindly obedient gear-turners while cartoons about freedom play in their heads. The problem isn't wokeism. The problem is that important conversations like U.S. militarism and imperialism get bogged down in ridiculous conversations about whether the U.S. military is too woke or not woke enough instead of how it's killing people and threatening the whole world. Engaging in either side of that debate protects the worst impulses of the most powerful and dangerous people in the world, because it moves the crosshairs of public scrutiny from the powerful to the other side of the wokeness culture war. This is happening all over the place. A good example is the way Republicans have been pushing the most horrific agendas of U.S. imperialism but using anti-wokeness as a carrying agent for their propaganda, like when Jesse Kelly said on Tucker Carlson that, We don't need a military that's woman-friendly. We don't need a military that's gay-friendly, with all due respect to the Air Force. We need a military that's flat-out hostile. We need a military full of type A men who want to sit on a throne of Chinese skulls. Or when Psycho Rubio said, We don't need a military focused on the proper use of pronouns. We need a military focused on blowing up Chinese aircraft carriers. The culture war says you should push back on the anti-woke rhetoric. Anti-imperialism says you should push back on their omnicidal warmongering. It's hard to focus on both. This is being exploited by empire managers in myriad ways. They get people chasing decoy dichotomies so they can't focus on the powerful. Step 1. Be a progressive. Step 2. Ignore a major problem that progressives are supposed to oppose. Step 3. Keep ignoring it until right-wingers start paying attention to it. Step 4. Frame opposing that problem as a right-wing position. C. Nuclear brinkmanship, Ukraine proxy warfare, Assange, Syria, internet censorship, etc. One of the reasons people are so casual about risking nuclear war is because it's a difficult concept for the mind to wrap itself around. Full-scale nuclear war wouldn't just kill everyone. It'd prevent every other human who would have been born in the future from ever existing. I have no special feelings one way or the other about China or Russia. 
I just acknowledge the indisputable fact that they are quantifiably far less destructive than the U.S. centralized empire. If they weren't being aggressively targeted by that empire, I probably wouldn't notice them much. Discussion of revolution and communism in the English-speaking world is just fantasy role-playing, unless it begins and ends with the cold, hard reality that the left has been completely neutralized and marginalized here, and the numbers are nowhere close to where they need to be. Moving revolutionary leftism out of the farthest margins and closer to the mainstream should be your first and foremost objective before you talk about anything else, because otherwise you're just LARPing. You're arguing about a political movement that has no actual movement. You can do this by outreach and activism. You can also do this by finding ways to make socialism and communism look so fucking cool that people start knocking each other over to be part of it. Finding clever ways to make it shiny and attractive in a very indoctrinated society. Anyone who tries to convince you to like a powerful person has traded their mind for personality cult doctrine. Whether their hero is Bernie Sanders, AOC, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, or Elon Musk. Proselytizing for the powerful is a sign that critical thinking has been abandoned. Uh, think about it. What would be gained by one person having positive feelings about Elon Musk or some other powerful figure? How does that benefit the world? It doesn't. Yet people try to win converts for them constantly, like evangelists proselytizing their religion. This is because they're all about the individual, not the cause or the policies that individual supposedly stands for. Anyone who tries to convince me to support a given goal or perspective will have my interest if their case is lucid and well-argued. But anyone who tries to convince me to like a given individual is instantly dismissed as a mindless automaton. I know I won't be hearing anything intelligent from them. Pushing agendas serves those agendas. Pushing individuals serves only those individuals. If you care about advancing a cause, then advance that cause. Don't get caught up in the propaganda-friendly, thought-killing tar pit of personality worship. Famous people are not your friend, and uplifting the powerful only serves power. This is especially true in the power structure we currently live under, where the only people who are allowed to get to the top are those who facilitate the interests of power. Filmmakers can trick you into cheering for the seal or the polar bear just by choosing which one's being followed by the camera and framed as the protagonists. They can also trick you into cheering for cops, a corrupt legal system, or an imperialist military in the same way. <laughs>